Okay, part of this year's tarpon prep is to get a new boat. The boat that I had was a Pelican Enforcer, uh, one of the more recent ones, and that boat is great for fishing those sheep's heads and those redfish up inside creeks, rivers, and bays, okay? It is a paddle boat. But, uh, when I took it out there where these tarpon like to hang out, which is more open water, it's rolling waves, you're fighting surf at the launch, uh, it just did not perform. It was, in fact, terrible. And if you go back to my shark and my tarpon videos, the hammerhead video and, uh, and all the shark and tarpon videos, you'll see that I had to get outriggers for that thing because it would tip. In fact, I did tip on, on that boat, even in a bay, but that was pretty rough water though, where I was, where I was at over that oyster bed because oyster beds create a lot of converge in, in the water. So I need a more stable boat and uh, I also need a faster, more powerful uh, boat because when I did catch that tarpon last year, uh, the paddle back was just insane because the, the wind kicked up, the waves kicked up, and I couldn't just land anywhere in the beach because there was like this rocky edge where people like to fish from. And if I were to try to you know, get on that rocky edge, it would have just pushed me right into those rocks and I would have flipped the boat and I would have got pushed on the rocks, got all torn up, it would have been a disaster. So I had to like paddle past that part, you know, to the sandy beach area and get on there and then walk like two miles from where I originally launched where my truck is. And uh, as I was trying to paddle past that rocky edge, the fishermen on that rocky edge, I saw one guy, he was walking the same direction I was paddling and he was walking faster than I was paddling because of, of, of the, so I, I needed something stronger. And uh, last year I had the opportunity to try out Hobie's Mirage and I tried out the, um, the Outback. And uh, it was an extremely unforgiving weather. I think it was blowing like 20, gusting 25, 30. And you could still move that boat. I mean, I could not believe the power of Hobie's Mirage. And the boat itself, in my opinion, well, for one, it's just too expensive. I mean, that thing's pushing $3,000. And that is just, like, astronomical. Like, I wouldn't even pay that. And it was kind of, it's also kind of big and kind of heavy. And it, and it kind of, like, moves outside the realm of a kayak. And, you know, I like a lighter boat that's easier to paddle because I don't want to give up the paddles. So, Hobie thanks to the demands of the consumer and all this competition and uh, these pedal drive systems, uh, came up with a boat called the Compass. And this is basically, the Compass uh, combines like all the features of, of two of their boats. Um, the Hobie Outback, uh, the Pro Angler, and I think there was another one, I forgot the name of it, that it kind of combined. But uh, anyway, this boat is lighter and it's easier to paddle. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles that the Hobie Outback has, but it has, uh, it comes with the basic drive system. You can put the 180 drive system, which it really doesn't go faster unless you're just like really pushing it to go faster, which is stupid. But uh, to my understanding, from what people have said about the turbo in terms of speed and power, uh, it's just easier. It's just easier. But it doesn't actually go faster. So, but what it does do is it goes in reverse. And, and you know, a lot of people are just obsessed with going in reverse with their kayaks. Uh, I've, to me, that's never been a problem because I always use a, I always used a paddle. And going to reverse is like on a dime when you're using a paddle. So I don't know how big of an issue it is. I, I but when I think about it, you know, I don't really feel like it's going to be that big of an issue. And I'm going to bring a paddle out there anyway. And I'm a pro when it comes to paddling, right? You know, I've even paddled in storms and made it back to shore, you know, three miles offshore. So I know how to paddle. 
So if, if reverse is such a crazy ass factor, I'll just bust out the paddle and go in reverse. But uh, it, because of its design, it just seems like it's lighter. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna demo one. I'm on my way to demo, demo one. Um, this place is called um, TNC, like a dynamite, or a TNT, excuse me. TNT, like dynamite. So it's TNT Hideaway, and uh, it's in Wakulla. You can Google it. Uh, these people have been there forever. You know, it's my understanding they've been there like since the 70s. It's like a family-owned uh, kayak tour business. It's right on the Wakulla River, and I guess they do tours there on the river. And they also demo uh, Hobie kayaks for a store called um, Wilderness Way. So that's like a kayak dealership or a Hobie kayak dealership here in the Big Bend area. And they just use this TNT hideaway, which I guess is an affiliate, to demo the boat. So, and both uh, of the business fronts are great. Like I've talked to both of them and they are great. But uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna buy it yet. I'm gonna test drive it first and just see how it performs. I was pr impressed with the uh, performance though with that Outback. What I'm mainly going to be looking for, because I know the Mirage Drive is the shit. It is the shit. So what I'm going to look for in this boat is just more stability. So, you know, I miss hanging my legs off the side. Like the kayak that I had in uh, Key West, which I bought for $200 used, and it was leaky, and I had to repair it and everything, uh, was a Hobie, or a Hobie, an Ocean Kayak Malibu Tandem, a really old school one. And uh, you can hang your feet off the edge and you can go in extremely questionable weather with that. So I'm looking for that kind of stability, but with a Mirage Drive, so I'm not like killing myself when, you know, the weather starts getting crazy on me, which it often does during the summer during tarpon season. So that's today's plan. That's half of today's plan. And uh, it's not going to take very long just to demo that boat. After that, I'm going to look for more bait spots. You know, I'm going to look around for uh, places where I can get mullet and crabs. You know, I've, I've already got a good idea where I can get some crabs, you know, consistently. But the mullet up here in the panhandle, I mean, they are freaking huge. That's why these people up here think mullet is food and not bait. <laughs> they, they think it is huge and you see them on, uh, they, they are huge. And you see them on menus in restaurants up here, mullet, <laughs> and, which I've never seen before down there in South Florida, and which is cool. That is totally cool. Uh, I've tried it. It's great. But uh, they are so big down here that it's like too big for the tarpon up here. Now down there in the Florida Keys, you can run like a 12 inch or a 15 inch mullet and still hook on to a big ass tarpon. But up here, I feel like they prefer the smaller baits because up here there's a new kind of bait which I'm not wasn't very familiar with called the manhead. And these are baits that are they're about the size of your hand, so you know, seven, nine inches, something like that. You know, it's like in the five, ten inch range. And there's so many of them that that's typically what they go for uh, versus you know trying to swallow a 12, 15 inch mullet, which is average size up here in the Panhandle. So my plan today is actually, instead of going to the beach, like what I was doing in Key West, is going to the beach and just slinging the net around at the beach and catching these mullet, you know, pretty much any size, uh, I'm gonna stay away from the beaches here because the mullets are just way too big and I'm gonna go up into creeks and rivers, okay, and skinny water, that's what the locals call it skinny water and just see if I can find smaller mullets. I've tried fishing the Manhattans. They're very hard uh, to keep alive in the live well. Number one. Number two, uh, you have to be on a boat. You got to be like in a bow of a boat and sling a net around. And it's just like kind of hard to do that on a kayak. Now maybe on a, on this kayak, maybe, maybe different. I don't know. But I wouldn't full of gear and everything, I wouldn't even try. I probably wouldn't even try doing that. Besides, they're just not, like impossible to keep alive in the live well anyway. So, mullet. Mullet stay alive pretty well. 
in an aerated live well, and you can transport them all over the place. They're really good at keeping them alive, but I need to find smaller ones that are more the size of a main heap. And uh, so that's what I'm doing today. So I'm, I got like kind of a busy day going. So I'm taking you all with me. successful demo uh, it's not a bad boat you know it pedals good and it paddles good and it's light and it's extremely simple which is what I like I like simple I don't like a bunch of stuff everywhere and complication I just like simplicity minimalist things and uh, yeah that boat's a great boat it's gonna, it's gonna come just over two thousand dollars after theft, and I think I'm gonna get it. He said that it's gonna take like a week or so in order to get it to me, which is fine because I'm on call on a bi-weekly basis. So after this weekend, I'm gonna be on call all that week, and I can't drive to the coast. I have to stay at home because I got a 45-minute response time to respond to emergencies. Now I'm heading to the coast and I'm just gonna check things out down there. Um, I probably didn't film me standing up in that boat. It just occurred to me, I didn't have the uh, video recording. But I did stand up on it and I stand it up. And uh, I don't know if it was just me or the boat. Um, me, it just I just felt very unstable. And you know, it's, that's probably me because you know I never stand up in kayaks. I have like no experience. That's the first time me ever standing up in a kayak. Okay, but I did stand up on it and getting up and then back down again was really no problem. Um, I mean, if it's flat calm like that river, you know, I could probably cast and it'd be no problem. It just felt weird because I've never done that before. And uh, I don't really see myself doing that anyway. Like, I don't sight fish. I just don't do it. I don't see... I mean, I'm at, I can see like the thrill behind sight fishing. You know, you see the fish, you throw something at it and then you catch it. I mean, I understand it, but I don't really feel that that's like necessary. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe when you're trying to find bait, but I don't have any problems finding bait blind. And these waters are dark. I mean, this is like mud water up here in the Big Men area. So anyway, uh, just going back to my original plan and uh, I'm gonna check out some creeks and I'm just gonna be driving around all over the place. It'll be kind of a busy day because I gotta go to all these different locations and see where these bait are holding up. And 
Now, like I said, I want to try to find the smaller mullets inside creeks and rivers. See if I can find them. You know, I can't be running no 15-inch mullet up here with these tarpon. They prefer the smaller baits. They really do. And that's not the case with the Florida Keys tarpon. But you know, the same fish, but different area. So that they, you know, they have their own their own taste, man. They they really do. People think I'm nuts, but I know <laughs> they're they're different depending on the area. And uh, so that's. It's my mom's birthday today, so I gotta be back at five sometime and uh, take her out to eat and uh, do something with her. And then tomorrow, I'll probably be back out here fishing again. Alright, catch y'all later.